my relationship with Jared before he was diagnosed, I think was just a typical relationship of mother and teenage son. He was beginning to become independent in his way of thinking and what he wanted out of life. I still lived with my family even though I'm 23. So um, I've always had a really good relationship with them and talked to them about basically everything. That was a good basis for, you know, having a good open dialogue and that sort of thing after I did get diagnosed. Caitlin was my only full blood sibling. Um, she was two years younger than me. Losing her was like my whole world crumbling and falling down, having the floor ripped out from underneath me. When my sister went into hospital, it affected the routine around the house quite a bit. Instead of coming home to dinner on the table, I'd, um, I'd often have to eat maybe last night's leftovers or what I had make my own lunch. It was hard because I was used to having her around all the time and used to having like her there for me and me being there for her. And because for a whole year we weren't, um, it was pretty hard. We adapted by trying to be a family of four who were very much uh, a family of five to start with uh, so that we remembered Jasmine whenever and wherever we could as much as possible. I realised that it's a challenge at the most n extreme normal of human life is to have to care for a child who's, who's gravely ill. Um, and then the challenge of dealing with uh, the fear, that phantom feeling, confronting that, dealing with it, working through it. My emotions were like everything in one and I really didn't have a clue how to like tell my parents about it. Dad and I didn't really talk about it because we just, we never really needed to. We, we could just do the projects and we'd help each other out in the shed and do all those sorts of things and we'd bond that way rather than talk. If I'm not talking about my cancer, it doesn't mean that I'm really, really upset. Um, it might just mean that I'm thinking about something completely different or enjoying doing something else. I don't think there's a good or a bad time to talk about cancer. I think you've just got to do it as a family, um, when you're all together. There's never going to be a right time, so you just have to make a time to do it. At the very end of my second round, I was just so emotional and just got really upset all the time. And um, so it was hard for people if, like, I had visitors and they just wanted to talk and I'm in tears. Sometimes I felt it was a bit unfair if I wasn't allowed to hang out with my friends or to go into the hospital the times I wanted to go in because it all kind of had to work around everyone and what Carly was allowed to do. Mum sort of wanted to be the mother role again and she wanted to know where I was, what I was doing, how much I was going to drink with my friends and what time I was going to be home. With beforehand, I was more independent and she, she wasn't worrying too much. He wanted to be just Jared, not Jared with cancer. I think that was when I really stood back and thought, yeah, he, he does have to live through this journey, not just survive this journey. My insights in coping with uh, supporting our adolescent through the cancer journey would be to stay patient, to be stay as joyful as possible, to be emotionally present, uh, find times to laugh, enjoy each other's presence and know deep within yourself that you will get through it. A lot of young people who have gone through situations such as these have, do have independence, more independence and are able to take on more responsibilities simply because they've been so resilient and thought a lot 
about what the what's going on. Well, I reckon parents they should just realise that the other kid is there as well and they count as well and they need the attention too. I definitely think honesty is the best policy. Definitely just put your information out in the open, put your feelings out in the open so that everyone's on the same page and everyone knows what's going on. I think that's the best thing. When faced with a situation like being diagnosed with cancer, it's like something that you just have to face and you have to get through it. And uh, even though um, we might be children or young, young people, we have our ways of doing that. Parents shouldn't worry about their children if they don't talk about their cancer because they'll talk about it when they're ready. It's absolutely possible to survive the cancer journey and still have a relationship with your child.